Hey, what's up guys? John here. We're walking into a wave of bank failures all throughout America. We're probably not through the regional banking crisis yet. Stocks of regional banks in the U.S. continue to plummet as market panic lingers. The collapse of another American bank could lead to a credit crunch and an economic slowdown. According to Janet Yellen, Jerome Powell, economists and even billionaires are all issuing the same exact warning. And just for context, just over the last eight weeks, New York Community Bank, their stock is down 66%. Valley National, down 26%. Metropolitan Bank, 26%. Harbor One, 18%. Zion Bank, 15%. Western Alliance, 13%. Commercial Bank, 12%. And Citizens and U.S. Bank, both down 6%. Now, Janet Yellen came out on the 6th of February saying that some banks may be quite stressed by empty office buildings. She also said that she's concerned about U.S. real estate, but says the stresses are going to be manageable. What does this really mean? It means it's probably not going to be manageable when you take into consideration that they are getting ready to pull. They're getting ready to pull the funding from small local regional banks all throughout the country with the BTFP program, the Bank Term Funding Program, which is the life support for these banks. So you think about this. These banks are sitting in so much stress through commercial real estate. All of this stress is going to be amplified when they get their funding pulled next week, March 11th, nine days from now. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to show you exactly what's going on. Show you what these billionaires are saying is going to happen next because let's be real. How often is it that all the billionaires are wrong? Not often, right? They're usually right on the money, well positioned for it. I mean, many people look at you know bank failures and they think, oh, you know, it's going to be like March of 2023 when Silicon Valley Bank fell and First Republic fell and PacWest got acquired by Bank of California when $100 billion in deposit was pulled, basically overnight. No, no, no. It's going to be a lot worse than that. Look at what J.P. Morgan Chase is doing, for example. They are hiring 3,500 employees, opening up 500 new branches, renovating 1,500 locations. They're expanding at a period in which every other bank is issuing massive layoffs. Collectively, all throughout America, there's been 60,000 banking employees let go over the last 12 calendar months. 60,000. Why? because they're walking into problems. That's why. I'm going to break it down. I'll give you the facts, show you exactly what's coming. Please hit the like button, hit the like button, people share the content, educate more people about what's happening in the U.S. economy and the banking system. And if you'd like to fix your credit to position yourself for this situation, I think what we're going to walk into is a massive credit event. I think it's going to get harder to get loans. So if you have one specific bank, you might want to open up a couple more doors. Maybe put deposit 100 bucks here, 200 bucks here. Start opening up more relationships. Make sure your income is stable, cash in the bank, good credit. You want to put yourself in a place to where if you were a bank, you would want to do business with you. I believe that's going to be the recipe for success going forward. I mean, this is absolutely crazy how fast this is all coming. But yeah, if you'd like to fix your credit to position yourself for this, we'd love to help you. At my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge-offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any issue at all on your credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com. Click the link in the description just below this video. Schedule a free shiny session. Look at this. Look at this stock. Wow, literally falling off a cliff. New York Community Bank Corp stock, just absolutely in really big trouble. Valley National Bank, heavy on commercial real estate, is confident despite investor worries. Then Metropolitan Bank, same type of situation. You have Harbor One, right? You look at these stocks and you just start to see, you know, very, very clearly that pain is coming. And so when you look at a company like Fortress, for example, they have $45.7 billion in assets under management. That's as of September. So you know that the, those numbers are uh, you know, probably north of 50, if I had to guess. right? So Fortress Co. CEO sees commercial real estate stress leading to more bank failures. And so what are they doing? They're getting ready to help offer support to these banks, buying off these loans, you know, taking off some of this stress from them. And you're going to start to see sovereign wealth funds, tech companies. You're going to see a lot of companies walking in saying, you know what, here, we can help you. We can get rid of some of these bad loans. And, uh, and we'll buy it for 50 cents on the dollar. That's what's happening. This came out you know, about a week ago, February 23rd. More U.S. banks will fail. This commercial real estate crash begins to work its way through to lenders' balance sheets, according to Joshua Pack, the co-chief executive officer at Fortress. Fortress has already acquired about a billion and a half performing office loans from financial institutions at prices ranging from 50 cents to 69 cents on the dollar. Now, I believe they're going to be jumping heavily in the multifamily. And the reason for this is because rents, you have a 50 year high in apartment construction, you have a lot of rents softening. So if you have softening rents with rising costs of insurance and taxes and borrowing cost interest rates are going up, you know, you have gone up greatly over the last couple of years, what are you gonna have? You're gonna have a lot of stress in multifamily. 
So I believe we're going to start to see a lot of these players walk out there by warehouses, office buildings, you know, large apartment complexes. We're going to start seeing a lot of consolidation of wealth inside of this uh, wave of bank failures we're walking into. So for context, two thirds of all commercial real estate debt is held by regionals. And most of these regional banks, they're the ones that offer life support to small businesses. They're the ones that are really supporting America. It's not the big, big banks that are offering all that support. No, no, no. Those big banks, they have wealth management. You know, they have different arms of their banks where they're making money on you know, these high net worth institutions and in individuals. But when you have these small localized regional banks, they're the ones that are often these car loans, these small personal loans. They're the ones that are really the lifeblood of America. And you have you know, 2.8 trillion of exposure in commercial real estate debt, two thirds are held by regionals. So they're sitting on what? 1.8 trillion in debt, right? 1.8 trillion of this, these commercial real estate loans. It's a problem. Like it's a really, really, really big problem. And that, that debt is coming due. Barry Starlet, the founder and CEO of Starwood Capital, he's saying that a trillion dollars in losses will be felt coming very, very, very soon. So if they're holding 700 billion of those losses, right, 70%, 700 billion would be held in regionals, you have to ask yourself, right when you start to see more headlines, more press like this about all these problems that are happening, and this becomes mainstream, and you have the first, the second, the third, the fourth bank start to go down, what are people gonna do? A lot of people are gonna panic, and they're gonna start pulling their money from these banks and going to the big shops. You know, the JP Morgan Chase, the Wells Fargo, the Bank of America, they're gonna start going to these bigger, too big to fail banks. And, uh, and it's gonna put more and more and more pressure because how do banks make money? They make money by lending out money. And if regional banks have less money to lend and their loans are not performing, it's gonna be a situation where they're gonna be acquired, right? They're gonna be acquired. And that's exactly what they've been warning. The Fed has been telling us that we're gonna see a wave of bank consolidations throughout America. And so it all makes, it all makes a lot of sense. Jake Morgan Chase is expanding for this. I mean, this is what's gonna happen. So per Bloomberg, Global Alts Conference, Miami Beach, that U.S. office, once worth $3 trillion, now it's worth $1.8. Their cratering values have been the result of remote work being solidified as the lasting legacy of this 19th era. The billionaire characterized the dilemma facing the office segment of the commercial property market as an existential crisis and slammed the Federal Reserve for leaving a serious mess in capital markets. The fourth quarter of last year saw the U.S. office market market's fifth straight quarter of negative net absorption in office. With 5 million square feet of new supply, the overall office vacancy rate rose to a 30-year high of 18.6%. Pandemic-induced work-from-home trends persist with no clear reversal in sight. Meanwhile, concerns are growing over a surge in commercial real estate debt, estimated nearly a trillion and a half in the next few years. Well, the real number is uh, 2.2 trillion over the next, you know, call it three and a half years, right, four years. So you start to see this wave of problems coming, and then you see the bank term funding program getting pulled. I mean, it's, it's a demolition of the banking system is what we're walking into, a massive demolition of regionals. So the bank term funding program was created to support American businesses and households by making additional funding available to eligible depository institutions. So this is going away on the 11th. And these institutions to help assure banks that they have the ability to meet the needs of all the depositors. The BTFP offers loans of up to one year in length to bank saving associations, credit unions, and other eligible depository institutions pledging any collateral eligible for purchase by the Federal Reserve in open market operations, right? So you're starting to see these changes come as Jake Morgan Chase is just opening up, you know, 500 branches. You just, you start to see it. It's just very, very obvious. They came out and said this on the 8th, Barron's, small banks are teetering, expect more failures, right? So if you see Jerome Powell, Janet Yellen, you see these really big hedge funds, and you see a lot of really smart money all saying that one event is coming, it would be naive to say that they're all wrong when you and I both know that they're probably supplied with much better information than you and I, right? So they have this great information, and they're making a bet based on that information. So according to Barron's, there's a systematic risk of large-scale bank failures. So not you know medium-sized, large-scale bank failures in the U.S. this year due to charge-offs and write-downs emanating from commercial real estate. Bank regulators have been vocal about their concerns that the too-big-to-fail banks would have sufficient capital to cover losses and a recession, right? So they're 
This is what they're going to start doing. They're going to start selling these too big to fail banks as, hey, look, if you want your money to be safe, you got to go with JP Morgan Chase. You got to go with Wells Fargo or Bank of America. Otherwise, you know, these regional banks are too risky. You might lose your entire net worth. You might lose your entire business if your only account is at, you know, XYZ regional bank, right? This is what's going to happen. However, they do not appear to be as concerned about how the projected loss will impact a large number of community banks in the country. Well, because the community banks are going to be replaced with Jake Morgan Chase. That's what's going to happen. So put yourself in a really, really good position. I mean, look at this. Wave of consolidation could save smaller banks December 4th. How could that save smaller banks if they're getting acquired, right? I mean, congressional Democrats urge U.S. to block capital discovery deal. After the banking crisis, it's time for consolidation of smaller banks. U.S. banking system, the great consolidation. Bank consolidation needed as more credit comes, right? So this has all been put out over the last year or so, kind of getting everyone you know, ready to accept this because this is what's going to happen. What do you think about this entire situation? Do you think, when you look at these bank stocks taking a massive hit, the bank term funding program, the life support, of these banks getting pulled in nine days, and then all this debt, trillions of dollars in debt that has to get rolled over and refinanced right in front of us, what's gonna happen? Well, they're telling us a wave of consolidation, a wave of change, and I believe a wave of credit contraction throughout the country. That's what's gonna happen. So my advice is if you are at one, you know, one bank, maybe you want to have two or three banks. So you put a couple hundred bucks here, a couple hundred bucks there, depending on, you know, everyone has their own financial situation. Put what you can in different banks and open up new relationships. Maybe if you have high interest rate credit card debt, look into balance transfers right now. Do what you got to do to get out of credit card debt. There's a lot of 0% APR balance transfer offers right now. You want to take advantage of these options while you can, because as these banks start to walk into problems, it's going to get harder to take advantage of some options that you could probably do today. And another advice is you want to have stable income, you want to have some cash in the bank, and you want to have really, really good credit. Ask yourself this big question. If you were a bank, would you want to lend you money? If your credit score is in the 500s, the 600s, the low 700s, the answer is probably going to be no in that environment. So put your credit score in a place to where you can get funding. Because when an economy is going through change and when there's periods of fear, there's massive moments of opportunity. So if you have any credit issues at all, we'd love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any issue at all in your credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com. Click the link in the description just below this video. Schedule a free strategy session for Monday. Catch you next video.